Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another episode of our JG7 classroom series. Now I've got good news for you uh, because now that we've covered the basics of aircraft performance and went over some theoretical considerations, now we finally get to the fun part, the dogfighting. But before we begin, I'd like to explain to you how this part of the series now works which includes this and all future videos. So every video will be dedicated to a specific BFM concept or technique or a small set of concepts or techniques that kinda go together. And these techniques will be explained in the respective video in a practical way. In the beginning, however, I will always do a short theoretical introduction so you get an idea how the concept works. If you want to dive deeper into the theory behind certain concepts you may be referred to the sources that are linked under the video. So these, this series really focuses on the practical side of things. All clear? All right, then let's begin with today's briefing and the first topic that we want to cover which is BFM flows. All right, so let's begin. What are BFM flows or what, what is meant by this term? Well, if you look at the current situation here of two aircraft merging, we have red is a bandit and blue that's you. When two aircraft are merging, we basically have two opportunities how these aircraft could merge. They could both turn the same way, in this case a counterclockwise turn, and then we will get into a so-called two-circle flow, as you can see because there's two circles um, mapping the trajectory of both aircraft. If both aircraft mer merge and turn into opposite directions, so as you can see for example here blue is turning clockwise and red is turning counterclockwise, we have a so-called one circle flow. Um, as you can see, the trajectory of both aircraft only forms one circle. And that's what we under what is meant by or yeah, the expression BFM flows. The situation that two aircraft are merging and depending on how they merge, so how they orient themselves toward, an, toward one another, whether in a two-circle flow or in a one-circle flow, we have to apply different techniques to win the respective scenario. And there's only these two scenarios. There is no other scenario. Um, we can either turn into the same direction, two-circle, or we can turn into opposite directions, one-circle. Now let's dive deeper a little bit into what that means. Now, if we look at a two-circle two circle scenario, we have a nose-to-tail configuration, okay? Nose-to-tail. So the two aircraft chase each other in nose-to-tail configuration. We shall see what that means. The two-circle flow or two-circle fight is also called a raid fight which means that we will have to maximize our turn rate by performing a max rate turn. Now this could be instantaneous turn rate or sustain, sustained turn rate. Now obviously we want to go for a sustained turn rate the lower we go because uh, to um, perform a maximum instantaneous turn rate turn uh, we will lose energy and we will have to give up altitude to sustain it to, to maintain that so um, Usually in a two-circle fight you fly your best sustained turn If you don't know what the best sustained turn is you may be referred to our first episodes about aircraft performance in a one-circle flow um, We have a nose-to-nose -nose orientation you could see that from the picture earlier, and that means we are in a radius fight. And hence, we will have to minimize our turn radius to be victorious. Okay, so let's have a look at how this looks like in practice. So again, 
this is you and this is the band that you're merging with. And if you go straight at one another without any sort of initial offset here, and you go into a two circle turn, then it will look like this more or less. Both aircraft have a respective turn circle with a, res with a turn circle center. And the turn circles may be offset as shown here, which we can call a turn circle offset. Okay, now to understand why a two circle fight evolves into a raid fight, let's have a look at this picture, which is a more realistic merge situation. This is you, the bandit is here, and there is initially some sort of horizontal offset here between you and the bandit. And when you then turn toward another, uh, when you then turn toward one another, in the same direction as you can see counterclockwise turn counterclockwise turn you end up in a two circle nose to tail geometry as you can see my nose is chasing his tail his nose is chasing my tail okay this is why a two circle fight is a nose to tail fight and this is how you can identify it it's a nose to tail fight now to understand what we have to do in a two circle scenario let's have a look at this graphic here. So again, this is you. And let's say after the initial merge, you're both oriented 180 degrees to one another. So you're on opposite, opposite sides of the circle. And this is situation one. Now, how do we win this fight? Well, we need to cover as much angle B as we can per time. And our turn rate omega is basically the angle covered per time. So we want to maximize our turn rate to cover as much angle as we can. So if we look at this scenario, for example, where we have a larger turn rate than our opponent, you can see at time two or yeah, moment two, we've covered more arc, more angle of the circle. And as you can see, we are now chasing him or closing up on the opponent whereas here we had 180 degrees separation now here we maybe have somewhat like 130 150 ish so we've already gained some ground on him so that means in a raid fight in a two circle fight you want to maximize your turn rate and if your turn rate is higher than the ter bandit's turn rate omega b then you will win that fight even if the bandit is on a um, smaller circle turn circle so let's let's assume the bandit is here and he would fly on this circle so even if his circle is small but if he covers if he has the same turn rate as being on the larger circle he will still only be here at moment two and you will be here so again you will come around onto his six so radius in a two circle fight doesn't really matter. You need to maximize your turn rate. Okay. Then let's have a look at the one circle fight. What do we have to do in a one circle fight? Now, as you can see, if you merge with one and with the bandit and there is very little offset, the natural tendency of turning toward one another would always result in a one circle flow. Um, often you, you will see that you know, this one circle flow evolves into some sort of scissors. So this is how it would uh, turn out. But again, as you can see, the arrows point toward each other. So it's a nose to nose configuration. Now, how do we win the one circle fight? Well, since it is a nose to nose configuration, we want to fly a tighter radius than our bandit because that allows us to come around this circle or to fly a tighter circle and get our nose onto the bandit first because when he flies a larger circle as you can see here initially we start here again next to one another if he flies the larger circle his aircraft is going to point somewhat this direction as indicated by the arrow whereas your aircraft is pointing all over, already toward him so you can potentially fire at him and he cannot and this only works if we fly the large the, the, the sorry the smaller radius the one the 
the person here, the fighter that flies the larger radius is going to lose that fight for simply that reason. That's why you want to fly a minimus, minimum radius turn. And you need to fly a tighter radius than your opponent to win in the one circle. In conclusion, what we take away from this lesson is that, or short theoretical introduction, is that a two circle fight is a rate fight, and hence we need to maximize our turn rate. We have instantaneous turn rate and we have sustained turn rate. The lower we go, the more we have to go towards sustained turn rate, because instantaneous turn rate we can only maintain by giving up altitude. In a one circle fight, you want to fly a minimum radius fight. So you want to minimize your turn radius. Again, the best rate speed and a minimum radius speed for a World War II aircraft are more or less the same. So you will have to aim for your um, sustained turn speed also for the minimum radius fight. You can potentially go slower because turn rate doesn't really matter here, you need to fly a tighter radius. So your instantaneous, best instantaneous turn speed will be your minimum radius. And the slower you go, the smaller your radius is going to be. So this is what you need to do. And now we shall see how this works out in practice. All right, so let's have a look at how proper one circle and two circle PFM is done in practice. As you can see here, we are merging with another 109 flown by our good friend Eagle. He's a great 109 pilot and a great dogfighter. So this is the reason why I got this great footage for you, um, which is very ex exemplary for, for the topic we are discussing today. So thank you Eagle for flying that plane. All right, so um, as you can see, we're merging in a neutral head-on situation with a slight horizontal offset, but it's very tiny. So um, this is why this is most likely going to be developing in a once into a one-circle flow initially after the merge. So let's see how it plays out. And indeed, as we merge and look above and out of the canopy, we can see that we are clearly in a one circle um, attitude. We are going somewhat like this and our opponent is going in this direction. He's down here. So his nose po is pointing this way. So yes, it's a nose to nose attitude. So we are trying to get our maximum um, or, or our minimum radius game plan going because that's what we want to do in a in a one circle flow and as you can see we are successful we can fly the tighter turn we are coming around more quickly also by using the third dimension going slightly vertical helped us to reduce our turn circle due to the gravity the effect of gravity and now as you can see we are already in an offensive position as we are uh, more or less behind his 9-3 line He's 9 3 line is this line through his wingtips, and we want to be in this area behind him, which is his control zone. Once we are here, we can control the fight and we can, yeah, basically drive home this en engagement and become victorious. So, this is uh, what we are going to do next. Of course, we are still in a one circle, so these head on merges uh, will occur. <laughs> but you can see now we are getting more and more um, behind his 9 3 line there. And he notices that his one circle yeah. game plan did not work. Um, I didn't overshoot, he d couldn't fly a tighter turn, so he went down and tried to ditch partially at least into a two circle. Now, of course, we are rather offensive, so but we can still tell that we are in a two-circle configuration. We are pointing this way, and he is going to come around, and he's going to... Oops, that's the wrong spot. 
and he's, his nose is going to point the other way, but essentially we are chasing his tail here and hence we are in a two circle and now it's about maximizing our turn rate so we can stay behind and get in a better position. Um, another ins unsuccessful attempt to shoot at him and as you can see here he's noticing that his energy state is low so he needs to get some energy back convert some altitude into speed uh, to get that energy back and again now he's trying to slowly get us back into a one circle scenario as he's trying to make us overshoot we're a bit too aggressive here we should have gone all over the top and uh, fly a high yo-yo but again we managed closure just well enough to stay behind him and from a two circle brief two circle we are back in a one circle which you could tell by our nose to nose attitude however now as we are getting close to the ground really um, we are now going right into a two circle turn and let's see if that's correct so we need to spot for our nose to tail attitude again um, and it is quite obvious that we are going this way and the opponent over here is going this way so yes it's a nose to tail attitude and we are in two circles so now we need to maximize our turn rate in this case we can only fly our max sustained turn rate energy neutral which means that we want to not lose altitude of course because we don't have any altitude to spare we need to stay at this constant altitude otherwise we crash into the ground so the only option that we have is to fly our maximum sustained turn rate if you don't know what this means go to the back to the first three videos where we explain uh, this term in more detail so essentially in the 109 this is between 270 and 300 kilometers an hour so we are keeping that speed as best we can as precisely as we can to maximize our turn rate here and you can see it's working quite nicely and um, he's ever so slightly coming around and coming forward on our canopy bow so he's drifting ever so slightly forward we had initial struggles to get it settled properly but uh, that's been sorted out um, yeah what you also notice is a sort of yo-yoing effect so right now he w is relatively close to us and now he's further away this yo-yoing effect always occurs in a two circle fight when there's a turn circle offset so when we are not flying on the same circle but rather on two different circles like in the pictures earlier or in the chalkboard earlier and this sometimes makes it a bit difficult to read your winning and losing cues a definite winning cue for a two circle is when the opponent drives forward on your canopy and slowly comes into your assessment window somewhere over here so the less you have to look behind the better you are and the m and you're winning in this fight because then he's dry he's coming forward on the canopy and that's what we are looking for and this yo-yoing effect might give you the illusion that he's actually quite far forward just to realize that the next moment he's almost on our six o'clock it seems so don't get confused by this but rather keep the big picture in mind and we can tell it is pretty neutral but ever so slightly he's coming toward our assessment window and um, hence we just need to keep it going and, and fly as precisely as we can now it's just a turn but you will notice when you're fighting yeah, against a very hard. good one so uh, sorry yeah, two yeah, circle we fighter right we this will will drain you this will cost a lot of energy and also mental exhaustion can happen because you really have to fly precisely as soon as you make a tiny mistake you can literally um, 
lose this fight. The reason being is that even a few degrees dif per second difference, let's say two degrees per second difference, is in a long term a lot. So in 10 seconds that will be 20 degrees, in 20 seconds that will be 40 degrees that the opponent can catch up on you. And between 10 and 20 seconds at this speed is what you need to fly a full turn. So in two turns it's already 40 degrees uh, better off than before. So you can do the math how long you could sustain that fight then. So you really want to make sure that you stay at your best rate speed. Now as you could see, and that's exactly what I was getting at, is that Eagle made a slight mistake and so lost the wing earlier, which is why he, not is lost, but he dropped one, because he stalled it, but it's pushed really it a bit too hard, and he immediately lost a lot of angle, so I could use this just a second or two that he needed to recover from this accelerated stall to really gain some ground. He noticed that, I was, I which is I why he immediately extended out of the two circle to get some speed back, and now he's uh, rethinking his options. Now we are both the same aircraft, so we are rather similar speeds. Um, but he's probably of the opinion that I am slightly catching up. And hence, he's now using the terrain, this forest here, to mask his movement. And he's uh, flying a hard break turn. I'm not following him directly, I'm rather pulling up. And doing so, I convert my energy into uh, my kinetic energy, my speed into potential energy or altitude while he's burning a lot of his energy in this turn. The reason why we want to do this is we want to get an altitude advantage back. We can check what fight we are in right now. It's still a two circle but because it's still nose to tail. Um, sorry, yeah, he's here on here and he's slowly coming around but it's a nose to tail attitude and of course initially it looks like as if he's gaining some good grounds on us but you will see as we go up here because he went into a hard break turn somewhat like this it's now going slightly up um, he's already burned a lot of energy whereas we went more or less like this okay so we will be able to use that energy later on because we converted our energy into speed, sorry, into altitude. And this is uh, quite important. So let's see how this plays out. As you can see, we are easily capable of our climbing here, him here. We are still behind this 9-3 line. It looks like he's coming around, but he's running out of energy, falling back out of the sky out of I the sky wait for the and sound we're just uh, coming in behind him uh, with an altitude advantage so now this, the black positional advantage our separation is one. okay so we don't risk an overshoot and he's flying in front of our gun side so we just send a few rounds yeah, down range the rolling over the top maintaining visuals claiming that and keeping that six o'clock of his and that was a good good opportunity and I think we hit this pilot there which is what he's just told me so <laughs> that is something that's also very important we're going to touch on in later lessons once you have the advantage in a dogfight which could be position and or energy at best both then your sole job is to really maintain and keep that advantage. Alright, and that's the final rounds and <laughs> that is one 109 destroyed. So let's get back to the classroom for some debriefing. Alright, so welcome back in the classroom. Uh, let's debrief BFM flows. Oops. Debrief. So we did see that what we learned in our theory session did indeed play out well. So if there's 
two things that you should take away from this session is that in order to apply your proper BFM game plan, you need to identify the BFM flow. So that's the first step that you have to do. ID uh, BFM flow. So as soon as you merge, identify what you're in. So you can either, either be A in a two circle. That's a bit buggy here. Sorry for that. Or you can be in a one circle. And we learned how to do how to distinguish. This is a nose to tail attitude, and this is a nose to nose attitude. Okay, and then you select your game plan. That would be second game plan. So again, A is our two circle flow. So in case of A, we do our max rate turn. At our sustained turn speed, especially when we are low, if you have to, you can maintain your instantaneous best turn speed by giving up altitude. But I advise to first try your max rate turn so you can preserve your altitude. And in case of B, we fly our minimum radius. I'm sorry, minimum radius turn. Okay. And that's all there is to it. So. And keep cross-checking, that will be number three here on the list. Keep checking if the flow is the same or if it changes. As soon as you see that the BFM flow changes, of course, adjust your game plan. That's all I wanted to cover for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you found this useful, especially having theory and practice shown together. Let us know in the comments if you like this format. and. That's all I've got to share with you today. I'm your host and instructor, Killerfliege, and this is Killerfliege out.